Okay, I want to first of all start by introducing myself and also introducing what I have brought for you. Okay, my name is Mira Kuchibu Zamasel and I am from Nigeria. I am an astronomy educator and uh, I run an organization called the Pan African Citizen Science e Lab. So, in our organization, what we specialize in is promoting astronomy in Africa, across different countries in Africa. You know, every one of us have seen the sky at night, we have seen the stars. And even while growing up, we ask ourselves, what is up there? What is the knowledge up there? So, for many, many years, many people have been exploring space. And they have been adding little knowledge Okay, but in our own time, we have technology, so we have access to vast amount of knowledge of astronomy with these, with these tools. And not only that, even the data that are generated are even beyond the manpower of those working in the space agency. For instance, um, NASA is one of is the space agency of the United States. They they make a lot of research about astronomy and they generate of data. But with the help of you and I, ordinary people, we can help NASA to analyze their data. And in doing that, it will help Africa to grow in astronomy. So what I have brought for you is like a tool that will be incorporated in your educational system to disseminate uh, science across uh, Somalia. So I have some, some slides I would like to present. Um, let me share my screen. So like I've said before, uh, my name is Mira Kuchibu Marcel and I'm from Nigeria and this is uh, my organization. I'm the Chief Scientific Officer of Pan-African Citizen Science. And Citizen Science generally means the kind of science, scientific research that requires the input of ordinary people. It means that you don't need knowledge of astronomy to be able to contribute. You don't even need the knowledge of science to be able to contribute. I mean, what I mean is you don't have an expertise. Maybe you don't have a degree in astronomy or you don't have a degree in any of the STEM fields. You can still make a lot of contributions in it. So it's called citizen science. So far, you love it because, you know, many people love astronomy, but they do not have the degree in their university to study it or they do not... Um, studied science at all, but they still love astronomy. So this, the kind of project we promote are those kind of projects that need their input. So you don't need so much knowledge to be able to make contributions. So these are some of our projects. Permit me, let me generate my, let me generate my, Okay. Just a moment. Just a moment. Let me generate my mouse halo so that I can see where I'm pointing to. All right. So these are some of the projects we carry out. We have Pascalab Project 1.0. We have the asteroid research in Africa and others. We have Pascalab 
Astrophoto Visual Development. We have Pascula 3.0 Web Telescope. Then we have Pascula 4.0 Exoplanet Search. I'm going to explain each of them one by one. In our first project, we promote asteroid search. Okay. We also um, have projects for for children that are less than 16 years. Okay. We also have space competitions for all ages. Now, what is asteroid research? What is asteroid, by the way? All right, asteroids are left over after the formation of the solar system. You know, the sun was formed about 5 billion years ago, as well as the planets. Just between 5 billion to 4.5 billion years ago. But... There are particles, there are objects, there are celestial objects that could not condense into planets. They were left. So those objects co coalesced around this area that I'm pointing my mouse to. We call it the asteroid belt. So that, oh, those objects are asteroids, okay? Now, they are orbiting about this region around the sun. Okay, they are orbiting due to the gravity of the sun. There are others that condensed around here. We call them the Kuiper belt. But the ones that are of interest to us are these ones here. We call them the asteroids. Now, these asteroids are about, in theory, there are about one billion of them. They are like rocks, but they are huge. Okay, they are big. But they are like rocks that are very, very big. There are one billion of them. But so far, we have discovered just a few millions of them. But they are very dangerous. Do you know why they are dangerous? Because left on their own, they are stable around the sun. They are stable moving around the sun. But due to the massive mass, or massive size of Jupiter, this planet here, uh, it distorts them, okay? The gravity of Jupiter changes their orbit because gravity is a force. So it changes their orbit, and when that happens, they will leave their natural orbit and they will start to crisscross the orbit of this inner planet. And when that happens, there is bound to be, a tr there is bound to be trouble. They are going to be colliding with this planet, Okay? So you can imagine it, you are on a highway, you are in your car, or you are on a highway, and someone just um, crisscrosses your car on a highway, you know, a bike. So you can imagine how dangerous that can be. So that's exactly what is happening in our solar system. So these are some of the, the asteroids that we have uh, discovered so far. Once they are discovered, they are catalogued so that we can continuously track their orbit around about the sun. So these are some of those asteroids. This green one are called the near-Earth asteroid because the, uh, in most times they come closer to the orbit of the Earth. Now, this is what happened about four, about 66 million years ago during the time of the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs dominated the earth, just like human beings are dominating earth. However, because they lack space program, uh, this asteroid um, um, impacted the, the earth and destroyed all the life forms. This happened recently. This happened recently in Russia. This is Tunguska in 1908. This is an area as big as London, although the whole picture, the whole area is not showing, but it is as big as London, and it is a forest, a very thick forest. But when this asteroid landed, because of the heat, the enormous heat and shock wave that comes with it, the whole trees were burnt down. And that place is like a desert up to you today. Then we have the, what happened in 2013. Just in the daytime, an asteroid landed in Russia again. However, this happened again 
in a remote area because Russia is very, very big. It happened in a remote area where there are no um, human being, I mean, human settlement. But the shockwave was able to travel to the nearby, nearby cities and the many, many properties were damaged. So this happened in 2020. A man was in his home. All of a sudden, he heard a loud sound, a loud sound explosion. When he came outside, he saw that something has been, something has penetrated the ground. He has to dig it, and he saw this uh, stone-looking object. It was looking like a stone, but it landed from space. It landed from space. However, um, he saw it. Although the, the Minara, you know, one thing about asteroid is that. Most, some asteroid comes with rare earth minerals, like iridium, rare earth minerals. So, so the man was lucky enough to sell this one, and he made millions. So he says man becomes millionaire after meteorite falls through his roof. And this also happened in Europe in March 11, 2022. All of a sudden, a rock uh, fell. An asteroid the size of a fridge. We, the NASA was able to spot it two hours before it landed. Two hours before it landed, they noticed it. So we are constantly faced with these asteroid impacts and they are very, very dangerous. So these are some of the satellites that are constantly scanning the sky uh, to monitor these asteroids. We have both space telescopes and ground-based telescopes. So the ones that we use, the ones that we choose, the data is gotten from the Penn Stars. This is the Penn Stars telescope. It is located in the University of Hawaii in the United States. So it is constantly scanning the sky and it generates a lot of images, image data. Now, after generating those image data, those data are sent to the IASE, Isaac, International Astronomical Search Collaboration. This organization is responsible for distributing uh, those image sets to different schools around the world. And we are registered with them. So this is the software that we use for the research. This is the software that we use. So we use it to detect asteroids, and this is how we spot asteroids. This particular one has been discovered by someone, as you can see the number. So we're going to train you on how to use this software in another meeting. So this is our campaign. We have been doing this for the past three years. And we have been recruiting students and the teachers from different countries in Africa. We have, been, we have reached up to 40 countries in Africa, but we are finding it so challenging to, uh, to reach out to those in Somalia. And that is why I reached out. So we are working with universities, space agencies, ministries of education, and so on and so forth. So these are some of the countries that have, that have active participants in our project. We have trained many people from Africa, like I've said before, about 40 countries. So this is the timetable okay, for the new academic year, starting from August. August. So this one has ended. We are in September, and it is going to end on October 4th. It is still on right now. But we want you to join during the October 9th to November 3rd. So before then, you must have been trained. So we have just two opportunities for this year left. Then we also have for, for 2024. So we have a lot of opportunities. These are the requirements for participation. Say so a computer, not a smartphone, not a tablet. You have to have good internet connection. Then time commitment, okay? This is not a task that takes the whole day or the whole time. 
you can gather your student maybe, maybe once a week or twice a week to analyze the data. That is how it is being done. Not just for this asteroid search, but for most of our projects. Then we need a minimum of five persons to form a group. Minimum of five persons to form a group. Then those groups should have passion for space and astronomy and discovery. Okay? So you should have science, you should have, have a passion for scientific discoveries. So I want to play a little, a short video clip that will summarize everything that I've said right now before I move on. You can watch the video and be following. It will start very soon.
So that's a very wonderful video right there. It summarizes everything about planetary defense. Uh, somebody wants to join, let me welcome the person. Just a moment. Let me welcome the person. Hello, welcome. Thanks for joining us. So back to the presentation. So this is the end of the my this is the end for the planetary defense. Now, so okay, these are some of the asteroids that we have discovered so far. Like I've told you, we have been in this for the past three years. So these are some of the asteroids that we have discovered so far. We have discovered 27, okay, 27 asteroids. And one thing about this asteroid discovery is you are doing it for many reasons. Number one is you are contributing to planetary defense. Number two, if you do it with your students, you are promoting astronomy, education, and awareness in your country. And number three, whatever you discover is yours. You will get, you will get to name the asteroid in the future. So you're not just doing it for NASA, for NASA to just use it. You are doing it for yourself. There are a lot of asteroids up there that needs to be discovered. Then we have other projects called the International Astronomy and Astrophysics Competition. So look at it. So these are posters. Although this one has ended for the year, another one is coming up on February next year. It happens yearly from February to June. Okay? So it is for all ages, whether you are below 18 or above 18. So depending on your performance, if you do very well, you can win prizes. There are other prizes to win, but these are just the major ones. So, and one thing about this is, it's an international competition. It's just, it's not for, for local, local, I mean, not for Africa, it's international. So, it is, if, a, if you're a teacher, you can incorporate this whenever uh, this is going on. I'm going to inform you. You can just incorporate it in your, in your scheme. So your students, you know, to enlighten them to stay steadfast in sciences. Then, we have space for our foundation. Here, we inspire little children in the primary schools, or uh, even in the secondary school. We tell them uh, to draw anything they can imagine about space. Anything they can imagine about space in a white sheet of paper. So these are some of the artwork we have collected in the past. So this is a girl from Nigeria. She said she wants to be the first Nigerian girl that will travel to space and on the moon. And when she gets there, she would like to put a Nigerian flag on the moon. So you can imagine, you know, they talk very smart. It keeps children busy, thinking positive things. So when those artworks are... are by the way, this lady here is in charge of it. She's an astronaut, but she's retired. She's, she's a United, Nation, a United States astronaut. She tours around the world inspiring kids with this space art. Look at the kids drawing, uh, making some drawings there. So when she gathers the whole, when, when she gathers enough artwork, she, she and her colleagues and her team we use it to build a spacesuit like this. And sometimes the spacesuit will be flown to the International Space Station. Like, this is an astronaut wearing it. This is the International Space Station. It's, it's a lab that is always orbiting the Earth every 90 minutes. Okay? So that is where astronauts leave and perform the experiment. So this is our second project. Here, we're going to, we teach you what we call astrophoto visual development. This is processing space images to produce beautiful visuals. And we use data archives from these telescopes. This is the Hubble Space Telescope. This is the James Webb Space Telescope, the latest and the most expensive 
and the most sophisticated telescope we have in astronomy. And we have the Los Compress Observatory. Okay? Now, why do we have to process space images? Unlike the normal images we take with our phones and with our handy cameras, they do not need to be processed further. I mean, if you take, if you take a selfie with your, your phone, you don't need to process it to add colors or do that, do this. No. It stays there. This is because it has what we call color CCD. But the cameras we use for, for space, these cameras, we call them telescopes. Okay? They don't work in the same way like this. They work differently. So when you use these technologies to take space images, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get black and white. Sometimes you can get black throughout. But the details, the pixels, are buried inside this black image. So it is your responsibility as an astronomer or as a citizen scientist to process it. And this is what we are going to teach you. You're going to process the images to produce beautiful visuals. And when you process it with a computer, you produce beautiful pictures like this. These are pictures of galaxies, galaxies, galaxies. Uh, these are merging galaxies. So it's an interesting project for teachers in the university, especially those teaching physics, geology, geography. Those are the people that will relate more to this project or any space enthusiast. Then we have our third project. Okay, this one is targeted at mostly independent researchers and university researchers. We want to uh, spread astronomy research across Africa. Okay, but you know, most universities in Africa do not have telescopes like this. So we wrote to the Los Commerce Observatory, and luckily for us, we were awarded 100 hours of telescope time. And we are dedicated to using it for astronomy research. These telescopes, you don't need to go to this site to make observations. You can stay in your office and use your computer to control them. So they are called remote telescopes it's because you can control them with your computer. Then the last of our project is exoplanet search. In this project, you are going to contribute into searching for exoplanets. Exoplanets are those planets that are not within our solar system. So if you look up at night, okay, let me start from telling you that our sun is a star. And since it's a star, it has planets orbiting around it. In the same way, most of the stars you see at night have planets around them. So our, in this project, we're going to teach you on how to contribute to exoplanet search. So this is, the, what, this is what we call the light curve, the light curve. So when, they, when there is no transit, the light curve will look straight. But when uh, an object comes in front of the star, it will bring down the brightness. It's a carbon sense, okay? It will bring down the brightness. So it will cause a dip. So when the, that object is gone, the brightness of the sun will come back. So this is called light curve. And we're going to train you on how to generate this light curve because you're going to contribute to exoplanet search. So look at the simulation. These are some of the planets. These are exoplanets. Okay? So as the star, as the planet is going in front of it, you see the, 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 the brightness will go down. Okay? When it goes out, the brightness will come back again until another one comes back and blocks it. So you can see the light curve. So there are different kinds of light curves. This light curve can tell you details about the size of the whole star, the size of the planet, the period, and so many other parameters. Now, if you start to succeed in our project, if you start taking our project seriously, we are working with different organizations that donate telescopes. So we would like to donate telescopes to your country if we start seeing your team succeed. So that is the end of my 
presentation. <coughs> Maybe. So, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Um, we have your presentation, so we need to ask you. Uh, my name is Ahmad. Is it? I'm engineer for urban construction okay. in Somalia, usually in Gero City. No, so, I, I know Somalia, but I don't know your city. Oh yes, yes, yes. It's the it's the it's the part of the the country. Okay. So my name is Ahmad, and I'm urban engineer for urban science project. So I don't have. A background for astronomy but i'm still i need to try for for this yeah you can succeed this in the project knowledge. you can succeed very much so, in it. and i have two questions okay for your presentation so the first two and i know all the participants they don't have the background for this astronomy we are going so to train what's them. accessibility we're going to train yeah, them oh, so what's the accessibility for the research? Is that uh, another question is no I didn't accessibility. get accessibility. Okay, accessibility to the research. It's online. Yes. It is hundred percent online, just like we're having this meeting. So the next one will be training. Okay. Everything is hundred percent online. Oh, yes. So, but you need a uh, the computer second question. and internet. Oh, the second question is um, the requirement for the for the participants. They must have four hours per week for the training and research. Okay, the so, training the training uh, is just three hours. Within three hours, we should be done. But we also have a recorded videos which they can listen to in case if they're on if they're not able to attend the training like i made a separate video for training okay so but i love live training because it will help me to access the participants and their abilities i mean they can ask me questions directly and i will answer them so just three hours we are done and once we are done they are good okay then when the program starts, they can devote once a week or twice a week, maybe weekends, to be running the activities. And even in that once a week, they can just, you know, dedicate two hours for it. And it becomes easier if your team is larger. So that's it. Wow. Uh, my second question is still, I'm continuing for the second question. And... Um, the participation for the uh, for this uh, participant is is, is a voluntary or there's allowance to okay. continue for this work all right like i said before it's a voluntary work it's a voluntary work and also uh that is why i am looking out for those in the university okay those in the university that have access to students so you can incorporate it as part of your educational resources, you know, to, you know, as practical, practical for the students to, you know, to have a practical experience, okay? Like I said before, this will benefit those in physics because physics is, is astronomy is under physics, okay? And uh, those in geology department, and also those in geography. So these are the target groups mainly. So it's a voluntary work. However, by the end of the participation, you receive certificate of accomplishment. It's also, uh, you're gonna learn some skills, uh, research skills that will boost your academic pursuit. And also, um, you are going to be you know, you know, you know, at least you have knowledge about space. You're going to do something for yourself. 
not just listening to theories and theories because that is one of the major problems with most African institutions, you know, always stating theories without practical demonstrations. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, that best meant to you then. So right now, I want to know um, the uh, the next move. I want to know the oh. next move. Like training, in terms of training. Or maybe if someone asks anyone, any of you have a question, you can ask me. Oh, it's not the person asking for the question. Ali. Yeah, yeah. And I am trying to reach my self. Uh, I'm my name is Ali Muhammad Musi. I am general auditor in Puntland. I live in Growe. So I have to. I understand the uh, the project and the and the question is was the same like uh, Ahmed, but uh, we need to take a uh, time and, and make a decision if we uh, do if we part in this project. I think that's good. I already did not get your question. Like you said, you need no. It's, it's not. Time. It's not question. It's not. Okay. Not question. No. Not question. Okay. But uh, you know, you know, you know, and to be part of this project, uh, to need this discussion for us. So we have to take a uh, time, and then and uh, get back and the decision. Okay, I understand. I understand. I'm gonna make a decision. I understand. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Omar. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, um, uh, hello, teacher. Uh, as I'm a consul, I'm comment. Uh, I am environmental uh, student for degree and master. There's uh, a lot of consul. I have uh, uh, astronomy. Okay. As, uh, everything. Uh, everything is there in, in this universe, like uh, Earth, its atmosphere, uh, including uh, uh, ice, uh, sun, uh, moon. Uh, as that's a concept uh, I have. But uh, as I say, Ahmed and Ali, uh, I think this project is not a uh, volunteer. Uh, so, uh, no, uh, no, we are graduated. Our time is uh, very short. Uh, uh, all of that, uh, we need uh, uh, to take time uh, to. Uh, when I, when I, uh, that's all. Okay, you mean that you are, you are this, the students will be going on vacation very soon, so uh, you need time? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, I mean, like, the next program is starting on October 9th to November 4th, so you mean the students will not be available by that time? And um, most likely, uh, all of the participants is, uh, they have different duties, so they don't they don't work for one place, so oh, okay. they don't have um, one leave, so they are, they they have a different leaves. Oh, okay. So uh, we need to discuss together, all of us. Okay, and within yourselves, within yourselves. Different. Yes. We are ourselves. So after that, we come back for you. Okay, good. And good. Give feedback. Good. 
All right, so I'll be that'll, that'll be my. I would like it. Yeah. I think it's first time for to discuss for Somali guys. Yeah, you can discuss within yourselves. So you get back to me, uh, so that we can know the next step ahead. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, goodbye. All right. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. So thank you for your thank presentation. You too. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Take care. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Master Michael Chabal. Yeah.